In this video, I'm going to show you how I totally redid these Dollar Tree chargers using IOD molds. So, I bought these chargers at uh, Dollar Tree. They were, well, a dollar each. Um, and I like the little beading around it, but it's Thanksgiving, so I just, um, I wanted to try and do something a little more special for my um, my fall tablescape. So I have, I don't know if you saw my um, granny chic bedroom tour. I had made a dresser. Well, I didn't make a dresser, but I redid my dresser for my bedroom in that yellow color. And I had added a back plate on the back of the dresser and added some molds. And that's what these are. These are IOD molds and I bought paper clay from IOD as well. And um, I have seen some of their tutorial, tutorials on like making jewelry or just adding a little more interest to um, planters and stuff. And I thought, you know, it would be really cool to dress up these chargers because I, I didn't really, when I bought these, I didn't want, want the silver. I had seen on their website that they have like these faux wood ones and that was really what I wanted when I went over there but I didn't see any so I'm going to order them online and paint them and try and make it look like a little wooden charger distressed thing and make it and maybe paint it or something but I thought how cool it was to do this I was going to cut a piece of plywood or find some wooden chargers somewhere else, but I thought, um, no, I can just use these and I think it will work out. So I just need to cover the outside in these molds. I will glue them on and yeah, I think it's gonna look really nice. So we're gonna do, I didn't do a practice one. Let's just do this together and see how it all works out. So first, they recommend when you watch their, their YouTube videos on using their molds to put in some cornstarch because it helps just the release of it so that your paper clay doesn't get stuck in the little crevices and you get all that nice detail. And I'm just using a scraping tool to remove this, but I think I did it wrong. But look how pretty that's going to look. I'm going to glue it. I think I can make it look. I think I can get it. Yeah. Voila. Okay, let me do another one. This I haven't used in a while, so it's been sitting in my um, bedroom closet. And I'm afraid it's a little stiff. I think if you just keep working with it, the heat of my hands will loosen it up some. But a little bit seems to go a long way. When I was doing my dresser, I bought two packages of this paper clay thinking that, oh, you know, I'm going to use it all, but I didn't. I I ended up, I probably could have put more molds on it, and it was my first time trying it, so I think if I do, if you've seen some, um, some people that have used it in, like, their dresser makeovers or their um, yeah, they've done so many really pretty designs. They've made mermaids on the side of dressers and they look beautiful. Look at that. Ah, oh, it's gonna be so pretty. All right.
this is a clean brush. It doesn't have anything on it. So I thought it would be better to stick that in there than stick my finger in there. I can't recall the last time I used um, cornstarch in anything other than this. And I can't imagine that I can use it in Optavia. So <laughs> I don't think I'll be using it for anything other than my, my DIY stuff. But you never know. How pretty that is. I think it's okay that, you know, um, I probably might need to glue them on soon. But as long as I get it bent the way that I need it to bend before it starts drying, I think it'll be okay. Cute. Really like this okay as you can see I have like other little molds in here there's this one that's kind of curved and I guess I could have used that one um, and then just put it on but I like this one because it's not at the same curve I put it up against the plate and it curves a little more and it's a little thicker I, I guess I could have used it but I like this one it'll be all right but what I was saying is that there are little crowns. I could add a little crown to the top if I wanted, or the little bees, but I think of bees as like summertime and this is for the fall. If I had leaves, like a leaf, leafy kind of mold, that would be perfect. So, but this is, this laurel is, it's gonna work out nice. Then my plan is to paint it, um, Bought some Waverly pumpkin color. I also have moss. So if your decor called for moss, that would be nice. I have hazelnut, which is a nice one also, but I think I'm going to go with the DIY cake batter and the pumpkin. I think those touches will really look nice with the, all the blue that I have going on in my dishes. So anyway, I'll probably speed up this so that you can, you don't have to watch me do this one by one. So I sped up this video so that you don't have to um, watch paint dry or watch me lay all these out because it, you know, once you get the hang of it, you start pressing it in your molds. It goes fairly quickly. I started not being so gentle with it after a while and it worked out perfectly. The molds really hold their shape and they're not delicate. You know, they, they pull out and they keep their shape and you kind of just form it in the shape that you want. So yeah, once I put them in place and curved them the, of the curve of the plate, laid them down, it all went seamlessly. And I don't show this because I don't show you me making the other chargers, but I noticed that when I did the other chargers that I didn't have to make any special pieces so that it went all the way around the charger. I was able to use full pieces all of the way around. I'm not sure why on this one I, um, I had to make a small one at the end. I, maybe it's because that first one that I laid was a little cracked and um, 
I put it in two pieces. I'm not sure. Not that you could tell because you really couldn't. See on this one, I'm making a smaller piece and filling in that gap. But once they're all done and laid out, you really cannot tell. So one more thing, make sure that when you, if you use this clay uh, or any kind of clay for that matter, it's air dry clay. So make sure all of the air is out of your package. I think that's what happened when um, I was storing it the first time. I was putting some in a small little baggie to see if I could play with it later on and get, get it to uh, warm up a little bit. But um, I just decided to toss it. I'm using E6000 glue adhesive to glue these down. And they, like you saw there, they're pretty sturdy and they hold their shape. So once that air starts drying them, they're they're gonna they're gonna stay in shape. That's why it's you should move quickly um, and bend them with the curve that you want them to to have. I think I'm gonna try and do some more chargers later on. They have other molds, like they have farm animal molds um, that I think would look really nice for everyday use if you're going to have a little, you know, just for your family or to set your table. I don't know that they had beading molds, but you know what? These these chargers right here have that beading. So um, like the little dots around the end, that kind of like hobnail look. If you wanted to do like along the rim, put maybe a farm animal. Um, and have a stamp on the inside. Not that you're going to see the inside, but you'll see the farm animal for sure. And then when you're distressing it, you can distress some of that beading away. That would look really nice. If I did have a leaf pattern, that would have really looked cool. But, you know, this is really nice also. I'm using the um, DIY paint because I had used that for... I had already had it. I was using it for some pieces of furniture in my bedroom. If you haven't seen my granny chic bedroom, um, take a look. It's really cute. I love the way that it looks in there. And these DIY paints are very vibrant. They are chalk paints. They're clay based. They're no VOCs or low VOCs. And um, yeah, they, they have great coverage. I'll link these things below, but I've been so inspired by watching these videos from the uh, Debbie Design Diary. She um, she is where I saw them using these molds the first time. She had done a dresser and put a um, seahorse on the front of it using molds and just shaping them so that it created a seahorse. And then she had another one that mimicked a, a dresser that was on anthropology. Anyway, this I let dry. This is my base color. I'm going to go through with um, the orange paint over the top of it once it dries. You see here that I was contemplating keeping it the yellow color. Um, but I went ahead and just stuck with what I had already decided in my head was going to look nice. So that's what I did. I will link those other YouTube channels. I'll also link the DIY paint and the IOD molds because um, I love them. I want to get more. I want to do more projects with them and I'll share those all with you. But you know, these turned out great. I, I used them on the back of my dresser and I didn't use as many, like I said before, as I could have, but that's not going to be my last project. I'm going to have more. But as you can, it looks like a pumpkin pie, right? With this color, it looks, it, <laughs> it was making me really hungry. So anyway, but that was not the color that I was <laughs> wanting it to look like. That's why I'm going to end up distressing it a little later on. But the smaller brush was better for getting into the details. Here it looks like, okay, so what I'm doing here is this is a wet distress. I took a wet rag and I gently, I know it looks like I'm beating the heck out of it, but I'm not. I'm gently rubbing away some of the top layer of paint so that it shows the undercoat underneath. 
and right here my rag is rubbing into the middle so be careful um i got some my orange paint touched it up some but i rubbed away some of the places that would naturally have gotten worn for that look then i took some of that chestnut paint and put it over the um, molds just to bring out some more detail i was thinking later that i probably didn't have to do this step i could have just put my wax on and then put the dark wax over the top of it and it would have brought out just as much detail. But I had already done it on this plate so I ended up having it, I just wanted it all to be uniform. So I ended up doing it on all of them. But as you can see, it's already bringing out some detail. Here I'm applying the clear wax over the top. And I put the clear wax on before I put the dark wax because when you put dark wax just over painted um, chalk paint, it makes it look muddy. Here is where I apply the dark wax. And it's darkening it up. It's making it look antiqued. One thing you'll see soon um, is on this next video, I applied a, a white wax to the top of that. And you don't see it. I didn't show you that part, but it did bring out more detail. Sorry about the video. I recorded it wrong. But here's the final look. This is with my um, china. I'm going to do a fall home tour and I'll tell you more about my collection of china. But didn't that look nice? It looks so beautiful. The way that all that detail came out. I'm so happy with it. I'm definitely going to do more projects like this. If you like this video, please um, click that, that thumbs up button and I'd love to show you more projects like this. If you like projects like this, make sure you leave a comment. Also, give it a big thumbs up if you like this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.